Hello friends, uh, the Wolf's here. This is a beginner's video guide to Monkey Island 2 Special Edition speedrunning. Um, we're going to be watching a run I did yesterday on stream, um, and I'm going to provide some commentary and callouts over the top of uh, when and how tricks happen, as well as kind of an overall explanation of the route as we kind of run through it. Um, this is up to date as of the 22nd of January 2021. Um, if you're more of a text guide person, there's an overview of the tricks and stuff on the speedrun.com guide page, uh, which will be posted alongside this video. Um, they're kind of uh, related to each other, but sort of an abridged version of the video if you don't uh, want to go through the whole route, etc. Um, of note, this route that we take uh, on this video is a bit different than what the world record has. Um, there's been a couple routing changes on the Amiga side that I've put into place on the special edition side. Uh, so just be aware of that. Um, one thing that we do not cover in the other video is settings changes. So if you are interested in doing the stop manip and map glitches, um, be sure to change your settings around. Uh, just to kind of cover that, there is a, a setting called object highlighting. That's going to be very important to switch to on. Um, that allows you to do the stop manip and uh, map glitch tricks. Um, the other setting I recommend you change is uh, to run it in windowed mode. You can pick the size that's more comfortable for you, but that will allow you to do some window prepping and it will actually make the game run a bit faster for you. Um, we've done a little bit of research and it looks like when it's in full screen, it's a bit of a hog in terms of your resources. So I highly recommend those changes. All right, let's get to, uh, let's get to the route. All right, friends, timing starts on play new game. We're skipping through the cutscenes here, so hold down backspace to get through them. At a certain point, we're hitting F1, as you just saw there, that switches us to the classic graphics. And then we're coming in here to skip Largo. So as soon as we see Largo, we're gonna hit backspace and do another cutscene skip. Um, just real quick, before we jump into the next section, classic graphics are faster than the special edition ones. Um, as much as I love listening to the, especially the music recordings on the, the special edition one, it's uh, just so much faster to be on classic. So just be weary that this is faster. Um, in terms of that skip that we just saw with Largo, there's a ton of dialogue that normally you'd have to do if you're playing it casually. If just as he appears, you hit backspace, you'll skip the whole thing and gain control of Guybrush right away. Um, so that's what we call Largo skip. Um, with that as well, you saw in this video, I go to the left um, and Largo will, Largo will appear from the left. You can also choose to go to the right. Um, there's a small advantage of going to the right over the left in that you gain control of Guybrush further to the left, meaning that you're closer to Wally's ship, which is the next place we're going. Um, I personally find it difficult to do on Special Edition because, uh, as you probably know if you're starting to run this game, the cursor will always uh, recenter to the middle of the screen here. Um, on stuff like Amiga or DOS versions, um, wherever you leave your cursor, it will appear. So I find that it's a, a bit tricky or maybe a bit more advanced to go, you know, kind of blind prep to the right side, then switch over to the left once you do the skip. Um, so, you know, especially to start, I would just say leave it in the middle there. Um, and then, you know, because Guybrush is more towards the right side of the screen, you'll always be moving in the correct direction. It's a bit faster to pick up. All right, so we're gonna scoot over to Wally's uh, ship here. This is kind of a, a tight cycle. So when we go in, we ultimately need to get the paper and we need to get his monocle. Um, a timer basically starts once Wally's head comes up and he says hello. Um, so we're gonna wait for his head to come up. We're gonna quickly go down, pick up the paper, and then we're gonna head back and pick up the monocle. Um, it's really, really fast on Special Edition. This is different than maybe Amiga or DOS, uh, especially Amiga at least, because I've run Amiga as well, um, where it's sort of on just a random timer. As soon as he picks his head up, it could be anywhere between 20 and 30 seconds, basically. Um, so this one, it's very tight, which is great, but it's also, uh, you just gotta be quick. So I just wanna call that out beforehand. There's his head up. We're gonna head down and grab the paper, and then we're gonna come back to grab the monocle there, and bam, that's kinda how you do that. It takes a bit of practice. From here, we're going to go get the bucket up in the ship. Um, this is uh, just done by picking up the bucket. We're going to do option one on this dialog. You can use keyboard or you can use mouse. I particular I use mouse for this one in particular. But um, So I, I'm going to roll back a little bit here and just talk about stop manips. There's a stop manip that was going into the ship and a stop manip that was leaving. We we'll can kind of review that the next time we come through there because we visit this ship quite a bit. But basically, stop manip is a glitch that takes advantage of the object highlighting function on uh, Special Edition. 
Um, casually, if you're playing, this is kind of meant for new players who don't want to, I guess, pixel hunt or whatever. If you're in special edition graphics and you hold down both mouse, mouse buttons, um, interactable objects will glow to help you kind of uh, see what you know what's on the screen so you're not kind of like you know looking around for things that might just be part of the background um, we've found that uh, you can click both buttons and you'll guybrush will just stop um, which is advantageous for things in like uh, cutscenes where he does a lot of walking um, you know uh, coming to mind there's a shopping uh, section later on where we don't even need to walk to the, um, the salesman to, to buy the things because we can stop and we just stop in place. Um, we also found in this case where if we're kind of close to a loading zone to the next uh, the next scene that we're moving into, um, if you do a stop and there, you'll actually just warp into the scene early. So um, we just entered and exited a bit early. I'll try to call these out as they come through. But as long as you have object highlighting turned on, um, you do kind of a, a double click with both buttons, so left and right mouse buttons two times, and you should be able to warp into places as long as you're close enough to it. There's also a couple other uh, cool tricks with it, but we'll call them as we get uh, we get out with it. So now that we have the bucket, we're gonna head down to the kitchen. This is a stop minute here. No, so normally we would need to go in this window here. You can actually stop him a little bit earlier and it makes it look like he's going in this window. But um, again, the animation's a bit faster. You save a little bit of time. So you can see we're kind of a little bit further to the right than we normally would be. Uh, from here, I'm, I'm playing in windowed mode as I had mentioned uh, before. You wanna scroll up, basically come out of here and scroll up from the bottom to be in this area here. Or if you've uh, got good muscle memory, you already know that you're going to be somewhere in this area here because um, the, the cursor will recenter. You can kind of drift down and come down here. But basically, you want to be coming under the table to go pick up the knife. If you're anywhere too high up, um, Guybrush will go up and around and come around so it's really slow. So you just want to try to go down and under. Um, so, bam. You can see I was a little too low on that one, but that's how you do pick up the knife. We're going to head out to the right. Um, we're gonna use dot skip here. Dot skip is basically holding period down. Period skips text quite fast. You're not actually skipping cutscenes, but you're rushing through the text. Um, so we're gonna be holding period down uh, to get through this dialogue. Then we're going to be talking to the bartender and then using option one. So here we go. We're also gonna be trying to do cutscene skips during that section there. He has a tendency to say the word yeah boy when he, uh, when he speaks to you. It's not a huge time loss if you don't get it right away, but um, if you time your cutscene skips, that's backspace, or uh, like you can do mouse skip on that as well, uh, which is uh, kind of similar to stop minute, both mouse buttons at the same time. Um, you can skip that dialogue, which is helpful. We're gonna go through option one here. Uh, I did it really, really fast, so you probably missed it, but it's option one for that. And then um, we're gonna do a second cutscene skip. Normally, Largo will come down here and there's the whole scene with him spitting on the wall. We can skip all that with a good, uh, good cutscene skip. So from there, we're gonna walk over to the spit. While we're walking over, we're gonna use the paper with the spit to grab the spit. And ta-da, we have our first uh, voodoo thing going on there, which is good. There is a stop and nip as we exit here, just a hair bit early, which is good. Um, you can get out. Okay, from here we're going to go grab the shovel, which is uh, we need for the bone later on, so we'll grab that. And we're also going to do our first instance of map glitch. So once we pick up the shovel here, we're going to exit to the path, as you can see. We're going to hit uh, backspace as we exit, and this will allow us to basically glitch the map out. So to kind of explain this, um, the map is not supposed to have object highlighting as you've seen in other, you know, like in standard scenes. Um, if you hit backspace right before you leave an area, uh, it actually adds object highlighting to the overworld map, which it's not supposed to have. So the game gets a bit confused. We can take advantage of this in a lot of different ways. Um, in this case, we're gonna be warping to the beach a bit early. You can kind of do the same early entry, early exit. Uh, type scenario so we're going to get maybe right over here and we'll be able to warp into the beach instead of having to walk all the way up here you can do the same thing with the swamp same thing with peninsula and the cemetery um wood tick and a few other places are quite interesting in that it doesn't matter where you are on the map you'll just warp right there but we'll, we'll see more of that soon so anyways there is the warp to the beach we'll get the stick here we're gonna leave glitch the map out we're gonna go down to the swamp we're gonna warp in and we're going to use the bucket with the swamp. In this case, what I do is I click on the swamp to make sure we're walking all the way there. You want to use movement 
at all times if you can. So walk to the swamp, you use swamp with bucket, and then Guybrush will pick it up. We're gonna head out, glitch the map out again. And now we're gonna do our first wood tick warp here. And we'll just warp right from there. And this is a bit of a variant from the uh, world record route pretty much all the top times on, on Special Edition at the time of posting here, uh, but it's found to be about a second or two faster if we do it this way. Um, so we're going to come in here, we're going to use the rope and the knife together to get the squiggles. We're going to do a cutscene skip there. Once this animation starts, you can skip that. We're going to head down and pick up the squiggles here. Um, this is a bit of a um, fancy walk if we click on this spot first. And then click, you know, when we get closer to this spot on the rug where we clicked, and click over here, you'll get a nice diagonal. Um, Guybrush moves faster on a diagonal than he does in a straight line uh, up, up or down. Um, let me pull this back really quick because there's one more uh, cool thing that we found out with Stop Manip. So if you do this near an interactable object, you can actually interact with it earlier. So right now this door is closed. We need to open it. We're actually going to open it from, from the stairs here. So bam, you saw that we opened it from the second stair. We should, we're supposed to be up here. So once it's open, we can also warp into it. It's the same trick, double clicks basically, but just, we just need to kind of prep the verb first. So we're gonna do open door, stop manip, then stop manip through the door. It's kind of interesting. Um, you have to play around with it a bit, but it's uh, the same kind of trick. So from here, we're gonna use the bucket with the door. Um, we're going to be using a couple well-timed cutscene skips in here. Um, so one basically as he's putting it on the door here and then she should he should come back down here to start walking once you start walking you can do another one and that will uh, skip the part where Largo comes in and gets the mud dropped on him so that'll save you some time once you gain control of him go grab the toupee we need to go out and watch the cuts well we're going to skip the cutscene with Largo again and we're going to start setting up our uh, our rat stuff here there is a stop manip that I was having trouble with quite uh, right there, but you can leave the ship a bit early. Here's our other uh, our other stop manip going into this ship here. You can get it right around where Guybrush is right now, as you can see, instead of having to walk all the way up there. So again, this is a cutscene. Largo's arguing with the laundry guy here. Uh, we're just going to skip that. Um, I use the mouse skip particularly to get through that one because I find it's faster for me to um, keep my hands uh, ready for use to start setting this stuff up, but if you feel more comfortable with uh, backspace, go nuts with it. I think that's how I used to do it. Um, so once that's done, we're going to head down here to the box. We're going to open the box, use the stick, and use the squiggles. Be sure to use it on the box, not uh, not on the stick. I have a tendency to do that. We'll exit early there. It's around his belt. Uh, this is kind of the eyeball I have for it. We can also enter this early as well, as you can see there. More stop manip stuff. Okay, we're going to go in here, we're going to close the door, grab the ticket, and we're going to get on out of here. Um, if you do that section a little bit too fast, you might get the wibble, which is kind of where Guybrush does his little dance there before he leaves. Um, it doesn't really lose too much time, but if you just kind of wait a frame, you'll be okay. So we're going to head back, good stop manip there, we're going to get the laundry ticket over, there's a cutscene here, we're going to skip it. Again, cutscene skipping can be done with backspace, or uh, you can choose to do it with the mouse skips technique, which is uh, both left and right mouse button, kind of similar to the stop minute thing. Uh, so we're going to head down uh, to the cemetery. We've glitched the map out. Um, there is a specific... Ooh, looks like I uh, clicked outside the window. You'll, you'll, get, you'll learn to love that. If you click outside of the window at all, um, the stop uh, menu will come up. So um, the idea is to try to click around this area here. Um, and so Guybrush will take kind of this walk through here, right? As we're in this area here, we're going to click on the cemetery. And then he'll start auto-pathing and he'll hit a nice diagonal towards the bottom. That's something that Leo Litz found. Um, I might not be the best at it, to be honest. But um, there are some, some visual guides on the light percent guide on uh, the Amiga version if you want to practice it a bit more. But that's what I do for mine. We're also going to switch over to um, special edition graphics. Reason being, there's a cool thing here that we can do. Um, the path up to the graves is quite long and slow. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to do it if you're a fan of 
the Amiga runs or anything like that, you notice that it's changed probably over the past few years of, of the fastest way to come up. Sometimes we go up like this, sometimes we try to do this direct route thing, and, so, and the most recent one we have is this sort of zigzaggy thing that we do. Um, in Special Edition, if we're in these graphics here, we can actually do a stop minute when we're down here on top of the graves, and we'll just warp up there. So we'll watch me do it here. Bam. So that's literally just doing, hovering over the graves, um, and you need to do kind of a special type of stop manip. So what I do is I roll my fingers over. So I do a right, then add the left, and I do that two times pretty quick, and then it'll warp up. So it, it takes a bit of practice. I recommend making a save um, as you do it, maybe as you're leaving wood ticks so you can practice both the walks uh, and the warps. So um, in any case, once that happens, I switch back to classic graphics again, that's F1. We're gonna use the uh, shovel with the grave, and then uh, as soon as um, Guybrush starts saying that creepy feeling, uh, you can skip the cutscene there. Again, we want to glitch the map out here, and then we're going to warp uh, up to, well, we'll, we'll enter the swamp a bit early here, and we're going to take the coffin off. Cool, so we need to start prepping up for the voodoo lady. This is sort of a technical, probably one of the more difficult dialogues of the game. Um, we're going to go in, we're going to grab the string and we're going to grab uh, the ash to life jar that'll save us time on the next uh, well uh, one of our later visits basically by getting a uh, a dialogue earlier on so we don't have to do it later on um, but basically as we go into the voodoo lady um, we're going to grab the the jar you already see me prepping it here this initiates the conversation with the voodoo lady from here we're going to be doing threes for the first half and then we're going to switch to ones after that so um, the main thing is there, we want to be able to do dot skipping, right? So, because we want to get through the dialogue as quick as possible, but there are also spots that we can do cutscene skips. So anytime that Guybrush is talking, we want to make sure that we're holding down dot skips, so that's period. And then anytime that the voodoo lady begins to speak, we should be, uh, trying to cut through those, uh, as cutscene things. So you can kind of cut her lines short. Um, and if you, it's a bit rhythmic and you might have to try it a bunch of times, it's, it's helpful to watch people do it live, um, I think, to kind of see what they're doing. Um, but yeah, this is kind of what it is here. So we're going to try to pick up the jar. Um, that sets us up for later on. In we go. So we're going to go three, three, skip, three, skip, three, skip. And then I go three again. And then we're going to go one, skip, one, skip one skip and then skip to get on out of there and that's how that goes so you can kind of cut a lot of her dialogue short and that one wasn't even perfect we got a couple extra things there we got the full toupee line for instance you can skip the second line of dialogue um <clears throat> if you're just starting out it's perfectly fine to just hold down dot skip and just get through there just uh, to learn the the dialogue tree a little bit better so it's all threes for the first half then ones um, <clears throat> real quick, we glitched the map out here to make sure we can warp, warp to wood tick. And we're going to go get the rat. Um, but yeah, it's it's something that, that you know, takes practice, I think. Uh, and it shouldn't be maybe your top priority to learn it right away. And you'll get it once you start kind of feeling how the dialogue is. So we're going to warp in. Um, this is kind of an interesting trick here. Um, and it's a, in my opinion, it's a tough one, although I don't know if everybody agrees with me. Um, normally, what we need to do is use the string with the stick here. Um, this is sort of a weird piece of RNG on Amiga and stuff because um, the timing of the rat coming over to the box is different every time. Um, if he beats you to the box, um, the rat will freak out and runs all over the place and you need to wait for him to go back to the box. Um, this is a helpful tip, tip here where if you use string with the stick like this and then you get really close, particularly like in this area here where you're just just outside the range of when the, the rat would freak out and you do a stop manip there you'll actually drop the string and it will uh it will attach it as if you're right next to it but you actually won't be close enough to freak out the rat so you get a perfect rat every time i'm pretty sure i get it here i do not but that was actually ended up being a good rat but that's something that you can practice it's um it's it's a tough trick but ultimately what we need to do is just use the stick and the the string together once the rat is in the box, you pull the string, pick up the string, and then uh, grab the rat. Once we're in here, we're just using the rat with the soup and heading on out. Um, if you're doing it quickly, 
uh, I guess if you're really good with muscle memory, you can click on the, the pot first to walk closer to it and then use the pot with the rat. That's a bit faster. Um, I, have, I was a bit out of practice when I was doing this particular run here, and, and yeah, I think it's a bit faster to basically go sit outside once it switches scenes, come in from the bottom like this, and then use the rat with it. That way um, it's smooth. Um, I think walking to the pot first and then doing pot to rat um, is more of an advanced strat, so um, that's my opinion on that. Um, so cool, so we're gonna get the job here. So we're gonna talk to the bartender again. Again, we're gonna try to do a cutscene skip. We're gonna do one and one. There are cutscene skips to be done in there as well. Um, so that is one skip, one skip, and you should be able to get in here. Um, play around with it and you'll kind of figure it out. You kind of have to let the, the chef speak just a little bit first. You can't just spam it or anything. Um, but you can get through it pretty easily. Um, then once you said, uh, here's your pay, you can cut into this, uh, the kitchen again. So you basically got the kitchen job. Um, from here, you're gonna automatically kind of be in this sort of spot here, which will put you under the table for whatever reason. So I highly recommend clicking on the window here to get a little diagonal to walk up and over, and then click on this window to get on out. You also see I did a little bit of a stop minute there because uh, of the, the animation. You can get out of that window just a hair bit early. All right, last section here. We're just going to get rid of Largo. Um, so we're going to go in. And then what I do is I prep the... Um, this is specific to Special Edition, but I'll move the inventory down so I have the voodoo doll and the pins on the bottom. That way I can come up from the bottom. I'm hoping that I did this uh, did this well. I did, okay, cool. So once you use one with the other, you can do the cutscene skip to get through this. Um, if you time your uh, cutscene skipping well enough, you don't have to do that dialogue that I just did here. Um, that's sort of a residual problem I'm having right now going back to Special Edition from Amiga because the timings are a bit different. But in any case, we're on the way out here. And so now we just need to head down to the peninsula. There's a special walk here. Um, if you're playing Amiga, I always look at this rock right here, um, but make sure you're glitching the map out, and then I look for this little black dot, head down to the black dot, and then once you kind of get to that area, you just click the peninsula. You can warp in around this tree here, maybe like this spot where my cursor is. Yeah, that's where I pretty much get it. So that's good to know. Um, and then we want to use the, uh, want to give the monocle to Dread. You can do a warp here by clicking uh, doing a stop manip on that spot that I just did. So once you give it to him, you're going to do option one. Do a bunch of cutscene skips. We're going to pick up the parrot chow, go back in. And then option one, cutscene skip, and then we're heading to Fat Island. So that's the beginning. That's my first split there. So that's the Scab Island split as far as it goes for me. Cool. So once we're here, we're going to escape jail. So pick up the mattress use that with bone use the bone with walt and then use the key with uh the door um one thing i'll note about the key um is that the hitbox is really weird on it um it doesn't go up but it goes down pretty far so even the key sits here um so i always try to just cheat down a little bit that way I'm, i know i'm in the middle of it so you'll see if you watch me do it before there that's how that goes um, we're going to open the gorilla envelope and take the things out and then do the same thing with the other envelope here. Um, save us a bit of time from picking them up so don't bother picking up the, uh, the envelopes, just open them up and get them in there. Makes your inventory a bit easier later on as well. Okay, so in the alleyway we're going to do a stop manip here to make sure that we try to stick near uh, the right side of the screen. The normal cutscene would have us walk to about here, I think. Um, if you do a stop manip, you might have to do two of them, because I think he's, he stops and then starts heading in again. Um, so if you do two of them, you can kind of stay near the uh, the side of the window here, and that means that we can exit that much faster. So you can see that I've got him there. A couple well-timed cutscene skips will get us through it. Um, it's not one that you need to spam or anything like that. You just need to kind of do um, dot skip, skip, dot skip, skip to get through. Um, that's a cutscene skip there. Uh, let the dialogue roll and then do another skip there. This is the uh, the the dealer section here, right? So what we're going to do is option one, and then we're going to answer, uh, like solve the puzzle, basically. So it's whatever thing he puts down first. So we're just getting through those. Um, your answers are always in order. So you have option one, and then you have 
uh, for the rest of these one, two, three, four, or five. Um, once you've solved the puzzle, uh, we've got this there. So we just do option one. You don't remember me. And then it gives you the number that was 22 black, he said. So that's, we got to remember that 22 black is our number. Um, I usually chant it to myself because I have terrible memory. But in any case, we're going to go in here. We're going to look at the card catalog. This is uh, kind of a tricky part. So once you look at the catalog, let me pull this back actually, if I can, uh, without ruining a whole bunch of stuff here, because it's probably helpful to, to stop this through, um, through this section. So going in here, we're gonna look at it. Um, so we're gonna, it's basically a little bit faster if we do PQR first, and then we're gonna work our way up to C. We need two books. So bam, this is our book right here the joy of hex then we're going to click on the corner one that brings us to e and f and then you can click on this that takes us to c and d this top one here that's about to load in is our other um our other book that we need the shipwrecks one so from here you can click on the wood outside of the boxes and get out of it quick and then we want to talk to the librarian so right click on her her hitbox is crazy and if you miss it you're going to end up in this back section so um get you know do some practice and get used to it Cool, so this one is one, two, and then one all the way all the way through. I'm using keyboard here. And then you can do a cutscene skip when when you give her the name of the book. That skips the, the animation of her basically like wheeling around and grabbing it, going up and down and all this stuff. So from here, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open uh, open this and grab the uh, the lens there. Um, we don't want to uh, hold period skip there, dot skip um, during that time because uh, the, the librarian can yell at us. So that's a cutscene skip just to get through there. Hold dot skip down and then hit a skip. Dealer option one, and then we remember it's 22 black. So we'll find that option there, 22 black. Cutscene skip as well. That'll skip the wheel spinning and stuff. Uh, we're going to take the invitation, that's option two. And you're going to want to hold down dot skip as you exit that room because this uh, because any 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 room that you're in where somebody's just rattling dialogue off even if you're not talking to them um, they will it will deload really really slow so cool so from here we're going to go to booty island um, probably worth calling this out now uh, before we do it because we were just talking about loading but you'll notice we have two timers going here this bottom one is for uh, real time that's currently what we use for the leaderboard um, though we're kind of discussing if we want to change that to this other timer, which is in-game time. Um, Firefight, who's a, a member of the Speedy Adventures Discord, just made this uh, in-game timer that's super easy to install. I'll probably add it to the resources part of uh, the Monkey 2 Special Edition speedrun.com page. Um, but basically, running both of these side-by-side -side is helpful. Um, this is your time without loads, basically, but it does not take time... It doesn't pause during those dialogue things I was just describing, but it does uh, take out like the black screens and, and the tapping and all the stuff that uh, you know is effectively loading. Um, but yeah, for those dialogue scenes, just be sure to hold down period as you go through them. Um, anyways, wanted to call that out quick. So we're heading to Booty Island, and that's a split there. Um, so we're gonna go to the uh, costume shop first, which is the building to the right. Um, we're gonna do. Oh, I hope that I do this. It's, it's uh, yeah, cool. So we're gonna click on the guy first to start walking towards him. Then we're gonna give him the invitation. We're gonna do a cutscene skip. And we're gonna pick up the dress and we're gonna head over. I always click on Rickety Rabbit, my main man there, to make sure that we get the nice walk behind the table. Um, and also kind of is the straightest line to it. We're gonna leave. We're gonna head out here. And I uh, typically I'll click over in this area here. That way you get a nice diagonal in. We're gonna do the same kind of open door early thing as we did before and then enter uh, to get into the shop here. So we're, on the Amiga route, we would only get the saw and the horn and we'd come back for the sign. We're gonna get all three right now because it's actually faster with Stop Minute to do it that way. Um, so let's go through it here. So we're gonna pick it up. 
option one to take it. And then we're going to stop Manip in front of the sign, which is the next thing in. And then he gives it to us anyway. This is sort of the best part of stop Manip, is we don't need to walk all the way over to the shopkeeper or anything like that. So for the sign, um, the sign there is a kind of a built-in pause where he's like, it's not for sale. And then he thinks about it and then he sells it to us. You can actually do a cutscene skip there. And you'll notice that uh, he went right into five pieces of eight there. So option one to buy it, stop Manip in front of the horn, buy the horn, stop Manip right there and then head on out we've done all the shopping that we need through there which is really cool we're going to make sure we glitch the map out as we exit and we're going to warp to the stuff the small structure this is another one of those moments where you can stop manip from wherever on the map and go there so we ends up we end up in the stop uh, the small structure here so these are it's option one all for all three um there's a decent amount of cutscene skipping to do there um that went really fast so let me see if i can um slow it down for you a bit here so we've glitched the map out we're going to warp in the small structure cutscene skip in here option one skip option one skip option one skip and then we end up here um this is actually the screen with the mansion which is where we're going to next but to do the walk all the way around to get there um takes forever so what we do is we just immediately turn around and then we go back to the mansion again and we skip all that time so we don't have to come out from over here we're just already over there you can do a stop manip to get in closer to the uh to the mansion i don't do it here but you can do it I enter in here we're going to grab the map um hold down dot skip for sure here is a ton of dialogue going on and then down to here we're going to get caught by the dog i'm going to skip through this and then you just need to give the right answers here um, so in this one, what we got, uh, if I can't be with you, I'm using, um, dialogue for these, soul is sick, uh, endless nightmare, and what a fool I've been, um, go through those ones. If you've played it casually, you know what it is. We're gonna go through here, there's a cutscene skip that we just, uh, did as well going in there, we're gonna pick up the ore. You can actually do a warp through the wall here. I don't know if I get it, but you can do a stop manip in this area and just warp through. Yep, I got it. And then we're going to head on out. Um, so we're going to lose the map piece here. Again, hold dot skip down uh, as we leave to make sure that we're not uh, getting anything going on there. We, that was actually an early stop manip to leave as well. Uh, Cutscene skip there. We're going to click on, click on the window and just keep clicking there because we'll end up getting a nice dialogue. Um, to walk and get the dog we're going to pick the dog up cutscene skip and we'll pick him up here so this next section is is what we call the horn strat part of the <laughs> part of the run um there's been some discussion lately on this and and i am kind of of the same mind where it's a bit of an advanced strat um there is a full guide on horn strats um, done by frozen spade uh it's another youtube video i'll link it in the description and i'll put a uh, little annotation or something up on here if you want to check that out directly um his version is done in the amiga thing uh the amiga version but uh the, the basics all still remain here um effectively cat like basically casually if you're going to do the chef um to do this puzzle you need to walk out you need to hit the uh hit the can um like the trash can and then have him chase you around the building and then you go in and get the fish um, and if, if you're, you're just starting out, that's a perfectly fine way to go about it. Um, basically the community has discovered that you can use the horn, um, and you can blow the horn and then leave. And it's a lot faster because you don't need to walk all the way down to the can to hit it or anything like that. Um, the other part of it is that depending on the frame that you leave on, leave the screen on you get a different animation with the chef which also cuts time down um, however there is if you don't get it right and it is sort of a frame perfect type trick um, if you don't get it right you'll get what's called a glitch chef which will actually lose a decent amount of time so um, I'll call out what I do here um, basically I'm gonna go around the corner here walk to the side of the house I'm gonna prep the uh, um, my inventory so the horn is at the bottom and pretty much as soon as the scene switches I'm gonna come up from the bottom use the horn so the closer to the side of the house I am the better um, I'm gonna hold down dot skip and I'm gonna be furiously clicking to come to basically leave the house um, and that's how you will typically typically get a fast chef um, what we call fast chef um, I believe this one gets a box chef which means I'm a little late on exiting um, 
And then if I'm even more late, I think that is when we get Glitch Chef. But uh, again, I highly recommend you check. If you're serious about uh, learning kind of this trick, uh, Frozen Spade has a great guide on it, a video guide. And on top of that, there's also a guide in the special edition uh, guide section that uh, just has horn strats, kind of a text guide as well, which is what I use to learn this. So off we go. We go around the corner. Uh, mine's pretty late. You can see I'm pretty far out. Normally you can get maybe half of Guybrush hiding behind the... Uh, the mansion. It's a bit hard in special edition because, uh, again, you have to kind of prep your stuff uh, a bit differently. But uh, that's that. So off he comes. I'm holding doubt skip down and I'm furiously going around. So we call that box chef because he comes out over and in. Um, your casual chef obviously will come all the way around. Um, fast chef will basically just come out the door and that's it. Um, and glitch chef will do the same thing but his dialogue will, will look a bit different. You'll kind of learn it as you get through it. Um, box Chef is perfectly fine. I think it adds two seconds, maybe three seconds from a Fast Chef, so it, you're still net saving time over the casual version of it. Um, there is a other chance that you get what we call Long Chef, which is the same chef that you get casually. Um, so maybe you pop out and you cut pop back in, but you do need to wait for him to run all the way around. So that, those are the four different chefs that you can get. Box Chef is great though. So cool, we'll turn back around. And then we're going to go in here and grab the fish, which we'll need for the fishing contest. Okay, one more stop manip thing here. If you kind of move over into this grass area here, you can actually warp through um, the side here instead of having to walk all the way around the path. I don't know if I get it here, I don't. But basically there's a spot here that you can kind of warp through. Be sure to hold down dot skip as you leave around that corner. Um, this one's a cutscene skip. Once you kind of hit the edge, you can just uh, backspace on out of here. And then as you leave, be sure to glitch the map out. I don't know if I did, um, but we're going to head to the big tree. Um, it's particularly helpful to have uh, the map glitched here because the animation that Guybrush takes to get over the big tree kind of goes back and then around and hooks in. Um, once you get to like here, um, if the map is glitched, you can just warp in, which is kind of helpful. So. We're going to go up the route, hop on here and use the ore, or step on it, obviously break it. We're going to pick it back up. A lot of cutscene skipping going on there. Um, cutscene skips to um, to get through the, the musical sequence and then dot skip to get through uh, Guybrush's last dialogue. All right, we're heading over to Scab Island now. So first things first, we need to give the uh, carpenter or broken ore. This is a, a stop manip thing. You can actually get into this spot from right here. Let's see if I get it here. A little early, there you go. Once your head's kind of in the window, it's fine. We're gonna give it to him, do a cutscene skip, and then head on out. Um, we're heading back to the area with the bucket. We're gonna saw the, um, the guy's leg off, his wooden leg, of course. Um, you can do a stop manip here. Um, Danzig, the dude who found this trick has a way of stopping early, so it looks like we're sawing this leg off. It's pretty funny. I haven't been able to do it myself, but it's uh, kind of a new trick. Um, we can stop and nip out here. You can see we just kind of blinked out. And then we're going to head down to the hatch. Um, we're going to prep, uh, do a little item prepping here, get the banana up and running. I tend, uh, in special edition, I tend to put it down on the bottom because it's easier to, to come up. For the window prep here so at this point I've um, you know once the scene loads up I can kind of go in here we're gonna get ready to use the banana with the metronome um, you can do a stop manip here so I try to do it right in front of the metronome so yeah I tried doing it there but I ended up jumping back we're gonna use the banana with the metronome dot skip to get through this talk to the bartender this is another tricky dialogue because we need to do the skip in the beginning to get rid of the yeah boy and then this is going to be one i'll try to call it out as i do it so one skip one skip one skip okay so now we're caught up so then we're going to do one to get the yellow the yellow drink no skipping on that then one three and then three to leave. We're gonna pick up Jojo and head on out. Um, so yeah, just to review that, that is one, one to say I want a grog, one to say uh, I've got ID, 
one to say, uh, you know, what drinks do you have? And then one to, uh, one to uh, get the yellow drink. And then one to say, I want a drink. And then three to say, I want the blue drink. And then three to leave. It's kind of a confusing way to do it. But um, if you go through kind of, um, you know, as you're you're learning the route yourself, you'll, you'll pick it up. It's pretty, pretty easy uh, to do. So we want to mix the yellow and blue drinks together on the way up here. I missed it, it looks like, but I grab it here, I hope. Yeah, cool. We're going to go back into um, the shack here. We're going to get the hammer and nails. Um, I did a, another stop minute to get in. As you noticed, you can get in a bit early still. And then we're going to do uh, what we call the dread warp. So as you leave, we can click on dread ship and then click back on wood tick. So we'll kind of just do a U-turn back to wood tick. But by clicking dread and going back in, it will still send us to dread's ship. It's kind of an interesting little trick. Um, and we're going to head down to Fat Island. It looks like I went to the wrong island there. Um, so yeah, we're going to prep up the fish here. Um, and then we're going to go talk to the fisherman here. This is a two and then it's one all the way. So that's a two and then we're just going to ride one all the way to the end of this dialogue here. So once he says, all right, it's a bet, we know we're towards the end. We're going to leave and then come back. This is a change as well. Um, because of the new timing here, um, it's actually faster to leave and come back because you get less dialogue when you return. Um, and if we're still running RTA, I guess, if you're learning this and we're running RTA, it is faster to stay in here and just give him the, the fish. Because um, the load time basically to leave and come back is, uh, is longer than what you'd like. So anyways. It's not too bad there. So we're going to give the fish to the fisherman. Once he says this is the biggest, you can skip out. Um, you can actually do a stop manip to leave here. I don't think I get it, but pretty much if you're on this corner, you can do a stop manip over the path and you'll just warp out. It's a tough one, but um, you can practice that one. Thread ship, we're going to go down to Booty Island. And now we're going to do um, the stand section here to get the crypt key. So we're going to open, enter skip one skip and then use the hammer with nails then use the hammer uh, the reason we do that is using hammer with nails will automatically try to lock them in there if we, then we're also going to do a use hammer after that and then basically that, that's called verb prepping or item prepping or whatever um, that that way we're kind of already ready to go it's use hammer with and then as soon as we gain control of the cursor again um, we'll be hovering over the coffin you can click on the coffin and we'll immediately start um, nailing them in there so this is kind of a helpful thing then we're going to go get the crypt key you can get the crypt key early um i don't know if i get it on this particular run but you can basically get in this area here and then do a stop manip and you can actually grab it early you can see oh i do get it there you go normally you're supposed to walk behind the uh the desk hold dot skip down there because that is a uh, a tough spot same with this one okay and so um Typically you want to do item prepping here if you have time during that walk around the corner, scroll up one, but we need to use um, the spit, uh, well we need to create spit so we need to use the straw with the green drink and then use the horn, we've just done that, pick up the flag, you can do the stop manipping that I'm doing right now to keep us in the front spot head to the line and then it's option four here anytime that there's uh, wind blowing on on that woman's what have you there a little kind of scarfy thing down to the down to the cliff we're going to use the fishing pole cutscene skip and then head on out from the path here we're going to walk um, up to the tree again you can get a couple good diagonals um, i kind of hold his hand especially as he kind of comes through this area here <coughs> So this part's a little tricky. We need to go onto the route, and then we need to use this reinforced ore to get up the up the tree here. So um, we'll use it just like we did the first time. Move to it. We're gonna pick up the old one, use it on the next hole, pick up the one here while we're still standing on it. Guybrush will automatically move over, and then use the one that we just picked up on this one, and then you should be able to do a cutscene skip at the end of that. All right, so once we're in here, um, walk to the pile, use the dog with the pile, and then cutscene skip. 
we're gonna head on up to get the telescope and then I will split uh, after I hit the telescope here. Again, the splits that you uh, choose to do, it's, it's totally up to you. Um, this is just what I, what I do on mine. Everybody does it a bit differently. All right, so once we're through here, we're just gonna exit the tree. Um, I do a little bit of window prepping to make sure I'm towards the, the side. Um, we're gonna head back to the shop because we need to sell the spit plaque. So we're just gonna give it to um, the owner and then uh, it's option one three times. You can do a cutscene skip on the first one that slows it down as we're, well, slows it down and speeds it up. So on the way out, we're gonna prep the green book here. We're gonna read it. 4286, those are our coordinates. It's random every time. So we gotta remember those numbers. Uh, this is kind of a, a, a tricky dialogue here. So it's um, it's two, three, two, and one. Um, and that will get us all the things that we need to do. Cool, so we've gone through there. Um, this is the map here, so we need to apply the uh, coordinates that we have to this map. Um, this takes a lot of practice to do quickly. Um, there is a really helpful resource um, that we should probably post on, on the special edition one, but uh, I know for sure it's on Monkey Island 2 uh, Amiga's speedrun.com board. I think it's under resources. Um, but it's basically a, just kind of a web page that gives you two random coordinates and then this map and you can quickly kind of just like click on spots and it'll keep giving them to you to get used to it. But the understanding is that uh, the higher the numbers, the more towards the, the top left it is, the lower the, the other corner basically. So you can see I go 4286, I hope that's right. And that's option two here. To go in, we're gonna cut scene skip there. And then we're stuck in to drop down the rest of the way. Um, we're gonna kind of hover from the top and come over to the head here. So we're kind of down and, and up, we'll pick it up. And then we're gonna start walking towards this way as soon as we gain control. And then we're gonna move up five inventory slots here. So one, two, three, four, and five. That gives us the parrot chow. That's kind of what we want. And then you can use or pick up the anchor to get on out of here. Just hold dot skip to get through those. Back to the shop again. We're gonna use the parrot chow with the hook. We're gonna wait one second and then we're gonna pick up the mirror. If you go too quick, um, the the guy will be like, he likes it where it is. You have to kind of wait for the parrot to move out of the way. Um, <clears throat> the other thing we need to do, um, once we buy it, that's option one to buy, we just need to give him the uh, monkey head and that allows us the map piece that we're looking for. I split on that give as well, <clears throat> in case you're uh, following along on that. So we're back to Fat Island. We need to use the leaflet with the wanted poster. Uh, we're gonna leave again. There's a cutscene that happens here. Skip that. Back to Fat Island again. Um, <clears throat> this is just kind of a quick way to get uh, Kate in jail. You can stop minute to get in there early. We're gonna open the top one to get the grog. We're gonna leave. So we're gonna flip the special edition graphics and we're gonna do a warp similar to the one that we did on Cemetery. Nice one here is we not only do we warp out, but we also glitch the map out as we do it so we can warp right into the mansion. Um, so we'll head on in here. This is the part where we need to get ready for the coffin stuff. We'll learn kind of how good the run is really gonna be. You can do a stop manip to open this door early if you want. Um, I didn't do it here, but you can. We're gonna talk to the guard, it's one and then two. You can also do one and three if you want. Um, either one works. And then as we head up the stairs here, or if you know you did it on the way in, you're just gonna prep the green book. We're gonna use the book on the other book here. And this new book will tell us what uh, coffin we have. So um, for those new to this, there's basically five coffins in the crypt uh, on our next split. Um, the closer the coffin we get is to, to the door, this is a weird sentence. Yeah, basically, it, the closer the coffin is to the door, the faster the time will end up being. So we rank these by one to five, by how close it is to the door. We just gotta think of coffin two, which is a good coffin, uh, second fastest one. The top three coffins are, are quite fast, the back two coffins are quite slow, so, um, 
no run is officially dead with four or five. It's not like you need to reset or anything like that. <clears throat> the my my PB is a coffin four, or coffin five actually, so you can still run very fast with them. But it will tack some time on built in, right? <clears throat> so we use JoJo with the uh, the pump at the top. We're gonna go in the the kind of cave tunnel thing here. Um, and then immediately leave. So normally, like casually, you would go in and then go all the way through and end up on the beach. Instead, we're just going to leave. Um, be sure to glitch the map out and then warp to the cottage. Um, we're going to open the window. Open the door here. We're going to do some cutscene skips here. We're going to use the mirror with the mirror frame. Um, by the way, be sure to prep that before you get in here. Um... I'm turning my tech speed down because if it's too fast, uh, this dialogue will be uh, will pretty much miss a whole bunch of things. So let me kind of re recap what I've just gone through. So in here, you want to use the mirror with the mirror frame. On the walk-in, you want to make sure you have the mirror available. So just scroll back down after you've uh, done your things with JoJo. Um, from here, you want to come up to the front and walk in front of the uh, table here. Um, once uh, Rum Rogers Jr. comes in, you can do a cutscene skip and he'll drop off your grog on the table, pick up it, uh, pick up the grog, walk uh, over here, and then walk straight up. If you automatically click this, you might go back and around, or you might come out and do this weird kind of like extra angle. Um, so it's good to go this way and then kind of go to go up. It's a bit faster. Um, use the rum with the plant and then from here uh, this is for special edition only by the way don't do this on Amiga um, I usually click over here uh, on the bottles and then uh, when I'm close I'll use the uh, near grog with the you know the cup and then you'll do a stop manip and you'll end up being right near the door um, you can actually do the, the drinking contest away from the table because of that trick which is kind of cool um, I kind of have a weird movement downwards, but you can see that I'm not sitting on the stool or anything. You can get really close to the door, which is kind of funny, um, and also faster, so just heads up on that. As I usually say, Guybrush never skips leg day doing squats. So once we, you know, if you did all of that stuff correctly, um, this part can be kind of nerve-wracking because there's a bunch of things you need to do, and it is a bit, like, it's uh, under a lot of time pressure here. Um, but yeah, hopefully you win on this and then you head out. Immediately head out the door, you're going to use uh, the telescope with the statue, cutscene skip there. Head back into the door, um, and then we're going to push whatever brick it is. This is what we call brick brick. This is the, the nicest of the bricks because you can see it right here. So you can see I pulled the brick, that works as well, it's a wise pull. Um, so yeah, you can either push or pull the brick in with the little dot on it. Um, but yeah, brick brick is what we call this one. It's the nicest one. It can be any of any of these bricks, basically. Um, but you can't see these ones uh, from the other screen. So brick brick is the best, or you know, my favorite one. So you're gonna go down into uh, the trap door thing there. You can do a cutscene skip to fall down and skip kind of the sliding uh, animation that happens here. We're gonna pick up the map piece. I'm gonna split, and then I'm gonna, gonna head out the the hole head back to the path, and then we're going to go back to Scab Island for the final time um, to get the final map piece. Um, remember, you can warp here as long as you glitch the map out before you leave, so we just did a warp. Um, you always come into Sca to Wood Tick, um, so just do a quick UE. Man, I had some bad movement there. Um, <clears throat> but you can glitch the map out and warp in early. Use the key with the crypt to get on in here. And then here's kind of the uh, coffin situation I was talking about before. So this is coffin one, coffin two, coffin three, coffin four, coffin five. Um, so uh, one thing I kind of didn't go over, but it was uh, how do you determine which coffin is which? So whatever quote, there's five quotes that come out. Whatever quote is attributed to Rapscallion is the one that we need to visit because Rapscallion's the guy who has the map. Um, so whichever quote is Rapscallions is the number of it so we had the second quote was from Rapscallions so we know it's the second uh, second coffin if it was the fifth one it'd be this one if it was the first one it was that one um, but yeah the reason for the time save is that this is where we come in and then you know we go to we have to basically travel to whatever uh, coffin it is 
And so um, if it was just one trip in and out, no big deal, but we have to take three trips in here. So, you know, if you have a coffin five, this walk back and forth three times adds up. And that's kind of where the time, time loss comes from. Um, it's a bit of RNG. So, um, yeah, it's, it's part of the run. It's, it's kind of a pain to run with. Um, but with that being said, it's a lot of fun to watch at the same time. It's, it's good entertainment for folks uh, if you're streaming your runs and stuff. So, um, pretty happy with it. Again, glitch the map to, to get in a bit early um, to the swamp here. Get in the habit of doing that pretty much every time that you hit the overworld screen. And here we are with our very, very slow coffin situation here. Gonna pop up. So this should be a pretty easy dialogue. We're immediately gonna go over and talk to the voodoo lady. Um, it's option one, option one. There it is, option one, skip, option one, skip. We're gonna head on out here. Um, the reason that one's so much faster is because we picked up the, the Ash to Life jar um, before we left Scab Island the very first time, so it saves us time now. Um, so we're gonna cruise on over. And head back down to uh, the cemetery, go back in the crypt. We're gonna use the Ash to Life with the coffin. Um, our coffin that we've uh, that we've gotten here. So bam and bam. Um, <clears throat> there's a bit of a cutscene here. We can't really skip much of this um, in terms of uh, rap coming up. Then uh, it's option one, option two here. Um, and you want to do cutscene skips in between all of these. Uh, there's a bunch of extra dialogue that you can have, but it's skippable. So um, typically what I'll do is I'll just kind of casually hit backspace as we do this glitch the map out. Um, I don't do this here, I don't know, don't know why, but if we're now heading to the beach, so warp to wood tick, then leave wood tick, glitch the map out, and then warp to the beach. Um, I didn't do it here because I don't know why, but that's much, much faster than doing it uh, the way I just did it, which is walking up very slowly. So from here, we're going to use the new key in the big door here. The timing on the door opening up is kind of weird, particularly on Amiga. There it is. We're going to use the knob, use knob. And then we're gonna head out. Pretty, pretty easy peasy here. Um, glitch the map out and we're gonna walk back down. There's really no way to warp any faster. I'm gonna just jump ahead here. Um, we're gonna use the Ash to Life once again. This one is two and two. Actually, it might just be one, two. So we got two. Yep, that's it. So two, and then we're gonna do a cutscene skip, um, which will avoid the animation of him like throwing up the map or whatever. We're gonna head on out. You, again, you can stop Manip to get out of that early. We're gonna glitch the map out here. We can warp to Wood Tick. I remember to do it that time. Um, and we're gonna prep the monocle here. It's not really a monocle, right? This is the, the lens. We're gonna give the lens to Wally. So normally I walk over to him, I didn't do it there, but you can walk over to Wally, give him the lens, and then give him a map piece. Kind of a difficult um, difficult bit to do, but it is what it is. Um, we're going to scoot on over and glitch the map out once more. I usually click around here and then click, uh, once we get closer to that spot, click on the swamp and you'll get kind of a nice diagonal to head down there. There's a couple different approaches to that. Um, recommend you check out the light guide. There's uh, some some good photos there of, um, I guess not photos, but screen caps of, of uh, what other runners are doing and stuff. So that's my approach. We're heading back to the voodoo lady again. This is a uh, option one and skip type deal. We're just getting the uh, juju bag for Wally. We'll have some important items in there for us. Got a really weird cutscene skip there, so I ended up sitting in the dark. Normally you can just walk out of that, but... Oh, and we got very unlucky there. So this is this is sort of one thing to be weary of. Um, the, the cursor, as I've said, goes to the middle um, of the screen in between scenes, and uh, I actually went back up into the shack there, so just be careful. 
cool. So uh, we're just heading back to the shore. We're going to use the box. You can actually do a stop minute to use the box early. That's what I did there. We're going to do some cutscene skips. I split there. Uh, dot skip to get through that text. And we're going to move around here. We're going to look at the juju bag. And we're going to hit uh, cutscene skip as soon as we start looking at it. That way you'll skip the cutscene. Um, this is the bone puzzle. This is kind of. Uh, this is RNG that's determined at the uh, the tree when we get knocked out there briefly. Um, but basically, uh, what I look for is the first line of each one, because that's uh, what should help us get through most of the puzzle. Um, I'll also take try to, I try to memorize the whole first verse and then the first one of the rest of them. Um, so we'll be looking for head, rib, hip, and then arm, leg, head. So we'll go through this thing and see how it goes. You can see me uh, chanting it on the stream there. So uh, real quick, there's the thing that, that we've called the thing. Um, it probably needs a better name, but we call it the thing. Where if you get a head rib leg um, on for your first one, it's actually faster to go to the right because it'll be the very first um, uh, like bone wall thing that you'll come to. We got head rib hip, I believe. So. Um, it's not actually faster for us to go that way, but I figured I'd, I'd note that. If you do get head, rib, leg, go to the right. It'll be the very first one. So you can see that it, this room is identical to the one over there, but you come from the left. Um, cool, so there's our head. So we're gonna pull that. Just go right in order. That's a pretty good bone puzzle, actually, there. Then we're gonna open the door, head on through. Pick up the voodoo key. We're going to make sure that we have the spit stuff on the screen, so the straw and the green drink. We're going to do a bunch of cutscene skips here to try to get through all this nonsense. There's a lot of uh, dialogue that we could sit through. Um, but once you do that, you're good to go. So use the, um, the stuff to give yourself the, uh, the spit. You spit on the pan and then spit over here a couple times. Um, I'll also, once I've uh, given myself the, the drink, I'll scroll down to the bottom because we're going to need the matches after this cutscene here that we are now watching. Just hold down dot skip here to get through it. Use the matches. Hold down dot skip. And now we're going to split and do a bunch of cutscene skips to get to Dinky Island. Um, I've had the game crash here, so be careful with how much you are spamming it. Um, so we can use the... Um, this is kind of an interesting thing. So you can use the martini glass um, with the ocean. We need to do that to get the water. But you can do a stop minute after you do that. And as you noticed, uh, I literally didn't even pick up the, the glass. So, um, but it's filled with water. So then from there, you just need to use the glass with the sill. Um, once that's in place, I think you'll have a little dialogue. We're gonna use the crowbar with the uh, barrel over here. And then we're gonna give the cracker that comes out of that to the parrot and then grab the bottle. So that's kind of the order of operations here. This one gets a little crazy. It, I highly recommend uh, making a save file here. Um, Dinky Island can be uh, tougher than it seems. There's a lot of things going on with it. There's a ton of inventory type stuff. So um, anyways, we're going to head into the jungle. Go to the left. Go through here. We're going to use the bottle with the crowbar. Be sure to not do it the other way around. Otherwise, you'll stop in place. If you use the bottle with the crowbar, um, you'll keep moving while you do it. Um, we're going to use the bottle with the bag here to rip it open. Um, so we'll use bottle on bag and then I'll also use water with and then wait for the box to fall down. And you'll see here, it's kind of similar to the stand situation where we're kind of just verb prepping and bam, we've, uh, we can use the water with the box and we've already made the crackers now. Um, that's how it sort of saves us some trouble down the line. Uh, this is different than doing it on Amiga where you want to make the crackers at a later point. So. Um, we're going to do kind of a similar trick here. We're going to go through here. We're going to pick up the rope, then use the crowbar, wait for us to pick it up, use the crowbar on the box, and then pick up the dynamite. Um, so that speeds everything up a little bit. I'm going to keep moving here. Um, we're going to head over to the spot over here, give the cracker to the parrot. We're going to do both crackers, actually. 
And then we're going to head north. So as we keep going north here, we're going to do some item prep. So the crowbar with the rope and the matches with dynamite. Um, and we'll scoot on out of here. Try to do a stop manip. Looks like it didn't work. Um, we'll keep going this way. We need to uh, prep the inventory again to uh, bring the shovel to the top. And then we want to try to scroll all the way to the bottom. I didn't get it here. Um, the inventory scrolling between these two, uh, this one and, and Amiga, are, are crazy different. Um, but once you get to the bottom, uh, use the dynamite with the hole. We're going to do a dot skip to get through all this stuff. And then we're going to use our like crowbar contraption here with the, the rods at the top. Uh, the hitboxes on the rods are a little weird. They might not be what you expect. So um, I don't know. If you're like me, you'll get quite frustrated with that for a while, and then you'll learn where they are. So, um, And then we're pretty much good to go here. That's the end of Dinky Island. Um, I split when the, uh, the rope breaks right there. Um, so that's that gonna wait to hit the bottom and then we need to use the light switch you'll see kind of where the light switch is here as I find it um, there it is so use that and then what I do is option three all the way through and yeah this is just dialogue so dot skip and, and frantically getting through option three um, you can do option one I suppose as well um, but the thing you don't want to do is option two option two um, has some walking animations with it because you're kind of trying to basically leave the screen. Um, it uh, is not advantageous because we get warped out of the screen anyway, so um, otherwise maybe it would have been, but that's not the case. So just be sure to hold dot skip down. There's not really a lot else to, to be able to do. There's no cutscene skips to my knowledge here, so we're just kind of going through. Just sticking with it. And then here is the part where we get warped. You pray for good RNG which we got here, which is great. Um, so let's talk <laughs> Let's talk about LeChuck. So we get warped here, that's RNG, where we get warped. Um, there's really, at the moment, no such thing as doing save strats. That's something that we do on the Amiga version where you can kind of make a scum save, a uh, quick save, and then you can kind of manipulate the RNG a little bit. It doesn't always fix it, but um, that's kind of what we're doing, uh, what we normally would do. We don't really have that option here because we'll lose time in RTA. Um, so um, the far right two rooms are what we call box room, and then there's also the first aid room or the infirmary, however you want to call it. Um, getting warped in front of either of those rooms is really good because those are the first two stops that we need to do. You can do them in not either order. Uh, I think maybe some runners might have a preference of which one to do first, but um, I will take either of them because uh, either of them I think are fast. It just changes your inventory order, and that's something that you know, you, you should be comfortable uh, to, to, to kind of work around. Um, so we're going to go in here. We're going to open the box, pick up the contents of the box, this one here, and then this back one here. That's the first uh, first order of business here. So we get the doll and we get a balloon. We're going to try to put the, uh, the doll into the voodoo bag. Um, got a pretty bad load there. Unfortunately, that happens. Um, so then we've walked to the right. This is the first aid room. Um, we're going to pick up the remains two times to get the skull. We're going to open the drawer, open the trash can, pick up the trash can, pick up uh, what's in the drawer here. We're going to put the skull into the, uh, the voodoo bag, and now we're pretty much set up here. So I've switched to an older run so I can show off the actual technique here for this um, helium room. So basically we're going to use the helium with uh, the three inflatable objects here. Um, we kind of go back and forth so you can use helium with one then one with the helium the helium with one i turned down the tech speed here after using the coin uh return only because uh it can go quite fast but what we're going to do here is wait for lechuk to come in we're going to pick him up or pick up his underwear if you can get the uh, pixel down we're going to use the underwear with the bag then use the hanky with uh lechuk all in one shot here so it goes pretty quick so we've used that now we're going over you can use a quick dot skip to get through the text there. Um, but that, that's how that works. The benefit of having this is that now we can basically get all the things done in the elevator afterwards. So we get an amazing warp here. I quickly use uh, the hanky with the bag. You can do this in at the top of the elevator too if you don't have time. Um, but anyways, once you go in the elevator, LeChuck should appear pretty quick. Um, we're going to 
close the door with the, uh, the lever there. We're going to use the bag with the bits. And now we've basically assembled the voodoo bag, but we're doing it in the elevator, so it kind of glitches the game out a little bit. You'll see some weird animations here after we use the uh, syringe with the voodoo doll. It just kind of disappears like that. This is much faster than doing it um, any other way. So we basically take the room to the right here. It's option three, the bottom option. The next one's gonna be option four, and then you're gonna ride option one all the way to when we kind of exit the tunnels. Then it's gonna be two, one, and one. So we're kind of holding dot skip through this whole thing here, um, just to get through. So I personally use keyboard uh, to get through a good, a good amount of this dialogue, and then I close up um, once everything kind of goes back to option one, I'll use mouse, but again, it's kind of up to you. So here we go, we have a two, who are you people, and then one and one. And timing stops there on Yes Mom. Um, and that's the whole game. It's, uh, it's an interesting one, and uh, you know, you won't maybe get everything on the first pass, but uh, I highly recommend you know, checking out some live streams of it. I stream the game pretty regularly, um, Frozen Spade, um, a way of life uh, and Leo Litz will you know stream stream versions of this game uh, quite a bit and a lot of the items from Amiga uh, Amiga runs will apply here on special edition ones as well um, so yeah anyways thanks for watching the video I hope this did help uh, I'm around on discord uh, in the speedy adventures discord or you can DM me if you really want to and leave a comment here uh, or you can pop into one of my Twitch streams and ask. I'm happy to help anybody uh, who has questions or, or is interested in running the game. It's a really fun speed game, um, so hope to see you around. Thanks.